evening, this is Bell Gerald, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in virtual reality. Howdy, folks. We are back here in X-Plane 11, and we are back in the giant behemoth known as the CH-47 Chinook. And this is the full review video for the Chinook. Now, if you're new to the channel, I do my reviews a little bit differently. Instead of just going through point by point in uh, whatever it is that the developer has as their marketing material, and just basically doing the check boxes. Instead, what I do is I like to do something fun. So typically I'll take a tour around a given scenery just to kind of, you know, show off the scenery itself, as well show off, uh, you know, what we can do with the vehicle that I'm trying to show you. So tonight it's not going to be any different. Uh, hopefully by now you will have caught the startup tutorial that I put up a few days ago. And of course, as you can see, we're already fully started and we're good to go here. So now what we're going to be doing, we're back here at Orbix's Balearic Islands on the island of Ibiza. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm trying to pronounce it the way someone who speaks Castilian Spanish would. So I think it's Ibiza, something like that. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. And of course, we are in the X Trident Chinook. And I got my trusty co-pilot Viper right here. Now, before we get started, I do have to make a quick announcement. Huge shout out to X Trident for their day one patch because it fixed this guy right here. If you recall in the startup tutorial, I showed you that there was a pop-up that you can use to adjust a lot of the various settings and features that this Chinook comes with. However, it was not able to be accessed in VR until now. We now have a patch that allows us to do that. And you'll notice that I'm also on a fuel page. We're gonna get to that in a second here. If you are in VR and you have one of these little guys here, a touch controller, how you get to this is you open it up, you go to advanced menu and you go down to CH-47D Chinook and options. And you slide to the right, and you will see all the various tabs that are listed on the top there. Now, since I already have it open, there's no point in my opening it a second time. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do, you may notice our gas gauge down there says we've got about 49, 62 pounds and dropping rapidly. We've got all of our uh, fuel tank or fuel pumps on, so all the main and auxiliary pumps, everything's running. Well, we're going to need gas for this because, folks, we've got work to do today. So the first thing that I want to show you, you may notice there's a little Hemet over there. See that little truck? The camouflage, nifty little army camouflage? That guy is our fuel truck. So what we can do is from this fuel page here, you'll notice I have it set to show. There are two other options here. I could either have him manually driven, which means I would actually be controlling the fuel truck. I don't trust myself with that. <laughs> or we could have him automatically drive himself, which is what we are going to do. And what you'll see him do as we go to the outside view in a moment here is he's going to come around, go to the back of the helicopter, and then he's going to come around to this side where the fuel door is so that way he can fill her up. All right. so. Let's go to the outside view and check this dude out.
Hey, hey, you want to guess? Well, I gotta say, he has done a much better parking job than I would have. So you know what? I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. Okay, so now that we have him pulled up to the side of the helo, what we can do is then click here, and that will connect. So if I poke my head outside here, <laughs> there's my crew, man. And you can see that our little dude is right up on the side of the Chinook. Get my head back in before I uh, get guillotined by this window here. And now what we can do is we can click on this and voila, it is refueling. So you'll notice that our gauges are coming up, our numbers are rising. And if we check on a fuel gauge here, we will see that it is in fact going up. So we're going to bring it up to full tank. So that should be what? Roughly about 7,000 something pounds, if I'm not too mistaken. And once it gets there, we should be good to go. And then we can dismiss our little guy. So let's go to the outside while this is happening. Alrighty, folks, now remember this is being done in real time. So, of course, it is going to take a while for you to fill up all the tanks, depending on how much you had in the first place. You can, of course, cheat a little bit and set up your fuel ahead of time. However, I think this is a little bit more immersive, so that's why we're doing it. But it does look like we do have full tanks, so now we can put this back to connect. And actually, we can just disconnect it all together, so we'll turn that off. And we're gonna set our little guy to drive off and he will go off into the sunset here. All right, everybody, you ready to go? And there he goes, he is off. Unfortunately, uh, there's no animation just yet to have him actually drive off and go back to where he goes. So we're just gonna pretend that he did. So he's gone from our life right now. All right, now, now that we've taken care of gas, we need to begin the mission. And this is the mission. So pay attention to this page, folks. So what you can do with this thing, you can set up your scenarios or your situations. So you can plant uh, items to be picked up and transported all over the scenery where you are, and then you can save it as a specifically named mission. It, by default, it'll save it as situation.sit, but as you can see, I've changed this one, so it now says Ibiza underscore sling load underscore mission. What that'll do for us is that's gonna place in the world currently a helicopter, a Huey actually, a Bell 412, go figure, and also a Humvee. Those are the two items that we're going to be picking up in our little show today. So since we're at Ibiza, we're going to need to head off in that direction to find the downed Huey, pick it up, and then we'll bring it back here to the airport and drop it off somewhere over on that side where the maintenance people would like it dumped off. And then, since we've heard from the guys that are stranded with the Humvee, we're going to be picking them up and we're going to be dropping them off here at the airport, probably close to where we're parked right now so that is our mission for the day now as if all of this were not enough we can also utilize the systems that we're given here so what i'm showing you here this is the gps unit right now it shows our current position this is where we are in the world what we can do is we can set the helicopter as the active object meaning this is the one that we're going to sling load first and we can go down here to where it says fly two and click it what that'll do is on the actual gps unit if we change it over to um i believe it is this setting here waypoint target it actually will tell us now the location of that huey so that means we can navigate to it 
Additionally, if you look on our HSI right here, you will notice there are several things. We've got it saying GS, we've got it saying NAV, and there's uh, several yellow items around the ring of the HSI. One of those has the number one, the other one has the number two. The number one is our GPS location, or at least we're going to make it so. So that way it'll point directly to where the helicopter is downed. And we can also change that to the Humvee afterwards, so it'll point directly to where the Humvee is. Additionally, number two on this HSI, we are gonna set that to the VOR for this airport. The VOR is right over there somewhere on the opposite side of the runway. I happen to know ahead of time that the frequency is 117.80, so you can see it there and it's already programmed in. So how we make the, all of that become active is underneath the HSI, you're gonna see these little buttons here. So for the CRS or the course, we wanna select GPS. And for the bearing, we wanna select VOR. So now you'll notice that the uh, little yellow needles have changed. They are now pointing directly to the Huey and also to the VOR that's gonna guide us back to this airport. Seems pretty simple, right? All right, now, additionally, we can change this. We're gonna put it on this setting here. And what that will do, that now gives us the distance to the Huey, 6.4 miles. And once we take off, it will give us the estimated time uh, till we arrive at that uh, location. So, with all of that at our disposal, we are now ready to go ahead and take off. And I think for this run, I'm gonna put you up here so I can like barely see you. We'll discuss why I'll have it over my head there in a moment. Uh, but we are gonna actually take off the old fashioned way. So that means we're gonna taxi out from the helipad. We'll head over to, I believe it is runway six at this airport. And we'll line up on the runway and take off. So before we do that, we need to make sure of a couple of things. First off, our autopilot is off. You'll notice the caution and warning lights are on, indicating that our autopilot is not properly set, and that's those two amber lights that you see there on the panel. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up our steering. This is our steering knob here, and we need to have this switch all the way forward. You'll notice it does its thing to set up, and we're pretty much good to go. So this means that as we add a little bit of collective and this thing gets lighter on its wheels, it's gonna roll forward because the rotors are pointing forward. And that is how we're going to control this aircraft on the ground. So we have the theory, we're gonna put it into practice. Let me just look back there and make sure my little guys are okay. Yep, I see one back there. Uh, looks like the little hole in the floor is open there, the hatch. So we're good to go. Okay. Next stop, runway six. All right, so we'll make our right turn here, and this taxiway should take us directly to the runway in question. Now, of course, it will take us a little while to taxi down there, so I'm not gonna subject you to that. We're actually going to do the magic of editing, and we will appear at the runway's end in a moment. All 
All right, so here we are at the end of runway six, and as you can see, the windsock is telling us we're gonna need to take off in that direction. That's information we already knew, but let's say, for example, we couldn't see the windsock where we were parked. We can actually find that out on the GPS by putting it all the way to that side. So you notice it says we've got a three knot wind from heading 065, bearing 065. All right, so that tells us uh, which way we're going to need to take off, and we're going to set it back to this, so that way we can uh, navigate to our downed Huey. We'll make sure everything's kosher. We'll leave the steering on for the duration of the flight, and that way it'll come in handy once we land. There may be some instances where we may need to put on the parking brakes, but at that point in time, I'll go ahead and take the steering off. All right, uh, let me shut my window here because I'm pretty sure I don't need to have that open while we're flying, so there we go. Autopilot, we will turn that on as soon as we line up on the runway. So speaking of which, now is probably a good time to do that. I'm just checking all of my instruments just to make sure that everything is where it should be. And yes, looks like we're good to go. Barometric pressure is exactly where I want it. Oh, one thing I should do is I should set up our radar altitude. So let's set the low to about 100 feet. And we'll set the high to about 1,000. We really shouldn't need to be any higher than that, especially if we're carrying something. All right, but I do believe we're just about set. So we'll get the parking brake off. Incidentally, as far as the parking brake goes, uh, there are two brake settings in X-Plane. And I should probably discuss that really quickly because it was a comment that appeared on the previous video. So there's brakes regular effort and brakes maximum effort. Maximum effort is considered the parking brake and it's available in two flavors. There's either toggle or hold. My suggestion would be bind a key or bind a button on your HOTAS to toggle brakes maximum effort. So when I push the button on my verbal throttle, you'll see it releases the parking brake and engages the parking brake. And then for like wheel brakes, you'll want brakes regular effort and you can basically put that to one of the sliders or one of the axes that you have on say your stick, for example, or if you've got tow brakes, you can use it for that. And what that will do is when you push on that, it will act as momentary brakes instead of actual parking brakes on and off. So just a little tip for you because right now you cannot really manipulate it. It's kind of hit or miss as to whether or not you can manipulate it. Uh, once it's on, you can turn it on, but once it's off, you can't really. So that's something that's being worked on right now. So fear not, X-Trident will get that up and running for you properly. Okay, but I lollygag enough. Let's go ahead and get going here. So we'll give it a little bit of collective. I do notice this helicopter does like to lean a little bit to the left. I'm not quite sure if the real one does that, but I'm sure those of you who are real life Chinook pilots in the comments, you can uh, chime in and educate the rest of us as to how this thing functions when it is on the ground. All I know is we're gonna line up really quick and this is gonna be a sprightly takeoff because that downed Huey needs to be back at the airport in time for our mechanics to get to work on it. So we're checking for traffic as always, even though I've got traffic settings off. I do have, by the way, traffic global that I use whenever I want to have AI here, but typically whenever I'm doing showcases like this, I try to keep the traffic completely off. It's just less distracting, basically. All right, so we're pretty much lined up and we're gonna begin our roll as we do this. A uh, couple of things that I am going to do here. Well, actually, probably just one thing. Turn the autopilot on there. Okay, so we are ready for liftoff. Let's give it a little bit of collective and head on down the road.
Okay, so we are now airborne and we are over, I guess this would be like the hotel district here in Ibiza. So as you can see, Orbix has done their magic once again. We've got some really interesting buildings out there. That looks like an amusement park that's about to pass underneath us there. So that is pretty cool stuff. And we're gonna basically follow the coastline here until we get a little closer to those hills. I wanna say that our downed Huey is probably on the other side of one of those hills. So what we can do, since we're pretty much cruising right now, is we can bring her up to about a thousand feet and we can engage the autopilots. That way we can do a little bit of sightseeing because obviously that's part of the fun of being stationed here in Ibiza. Not sure that we would actually be stationed here in real life, but hey, I can dream, can't I? <laughs> All right, so to engage the altitude hold, uh, we do unfortunately need to let go of the cyclic, so you kind of want to make sure you have your collective set properly there. But we do have it engaged right now, so that should keep us uh, roughly between 1,000 and 1,100 feet. We can also engage our heading hold. And to do that, we're gonna need to, of course, change our heading bug. It is a little bit sensitive, but what we'll do is we'll point it roughly in the direction we would like to go and then engage heading hold. So now I can take my feet off the pedals and the helicopter will try to keep us on the trajectory that I have set in. In fact, I'm gonna turn it a little to the right here. So that way it should catch up. Now we are going a little bit fast, so hopefully I won't overshoot, but I'm gonna quickly go to the outside view here just to kind of show off Ibiza a little bit. Okay, so we should be getting close to our Huey. As a matter of fact, we are. It does say we are 0.7 nautical miles away from the Huey. So we're gonna need to turn our autopilot off and we'll see if we can scan for it. Thankfully, we do have the magic binoculars here. So, hey, look at that. There's a Huey. And it does look like they've already got it ready for sling loading. I do see a little guy on top of it there. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna overfly it and then we'll come back a little bit, but I'm actually gonna drop this down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to see when it goes from connect to drop, indicating that we have a load. We don't have any audio cues just yet to actually tell us that the Huey is in fact connected. So we've gotta do things the old fashioned way. Now you will also notice where it says auto connect easy. You have easy, default, and hard. For the purposes of the video, I am not going to embarrass myself, so I am leaving it on easy, and you will have to deal with it. All right, but let's go ahead and bring the Chinook around. We'll pick up our Huey there. I love these little hills. Orbix, you do incredible work. I gotta say, were it not for you, I do not believe that X-Plane would look as good as it does. And I don't want to discount the work done by the folks who have brought us like Ortho for XP and of course Forkboy and his US Ortho photos and V-States and all of those. Very good work for everybody. However, Orbix just takes everything to a completely different level considering the fact that they also bring the buildings and the trees into it. All right, let's see if we can find our Huey. I know it's over there somewhere. 
We are going to need to slow down, though. We are at, what, about 70 knots? Yeah, roughly. And it should be appearing any moment. I don't think it is there. Oh, wait, no, there it is. There it is. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. Since we have set up auto hook, what's going to happen is we're going to need to maneuver ourselves right over the Huey. And at this point in time, I'm also going to have a picture in picture, which I'll be using the replay feature and a little bit of editing voodoo in order to give you a ground pounder's eye view of this whole process. But it is relatively simple. The hard part, of course, is keeping the helicopter where it needs to be. So I'm going to be focusing on that primarily. You will also notice on the right, it says cable length nine. That is in meters. So we've got a nine meter long cable that's going to be extending below the helicopter. And I'm going to do a pedal stop here. So there we go. We don't want to come down too hot and heavy, though. We'll pull the nose back a little, though. We'll give it some collective to arrest our forward movement. And we'll try to line up. So there you can see our little dude there. He should be appearing in the picture-in-picture picture right now. And hopefully we can guide ourselves into position. We will need to get really, really low in order for this to pick up. So I am definitely dropping us considerably. And I'm also referencing the radar altimeter just to make sure that we are, in fact, where we need to be. A lot of pedal work on this one, too. All right, right about there should be good. Okay, we are connected, it says. It changed to drop, so we're just going to go vertical. And we may need to give it a little bit of extra collective just to kind of pull ourselves up here. Whoo, that blade slap, though. And we should have a Huey connected underneath us. Of course, we will need to go to the outside view to verify that, so let's do that really quick here as we uh, translate to forward speed. right there and we're going to need to take this Huey to the far side. Now I'm also going to keep the picture in picture up so that you can see what it looks like when you are actually over the hatch because the hatch probably has the best view in the house to make sure that that load is still attached. I'm also trying to fly 100 knots or less. Unfortunately I forget the exact uh, speed limit that you're supposed to have when you're sling loading something like this. But obviously, I don't want to go much faster than uh, 100 because that could be bad. That could be bad. And now that we're up here, what I can also do is I can also re-engage that uh, altitude hold. But just bear in mind, I actually have to take my hand off the cyclic to do so. So let me see if I can set her up in a nose down attitude so that at time it takes for me to grab this, we should be right where I want to be. There we go. So yeah, X-Trident, yeah. We need key binds for this stuff here. I know there are some rudimentary key binds and I have heard that they are adding some more, but just be advised that is not currently available. So, um, you got to kind of make do with what you got. But since I know most of you who are going to be doing this sling loading stuff are probably going to be hand flying the helicopter anyway, it shouldn't be too critical of an issue for you. All right, but since we're on autopilot and we still have a few minutes to get to the airport, let's go back to the outside view 
and make sure the Huey's still hanging. Okay, so as you can see, we are by the airport and we need to find a good spot to drop this thing off. I don't want to put it off over on my side of the airport, but there is a nice little parking spot over there that appears to be fenced off. Uh, you may notice some kind of weird round or octagonal white shape just behind it on the grass. I think that's our designated Huey parking spot. So let's go ahead and get the autopilot off and we will bring this bird down and see if we can gently drop off the Huey. Now how this works is relatively easy. It does work based on the current X-Plane key binding for Jettison Payload. So I have that set to one of my buttons here. And what I'll be doing is I will be pushing that button once I have confirmed that the Huey is on the ground. That's gonna be the fun part, let me tell you right now, folks. All right, so let's go ahead and swing around here. We are gaining a lot of al altitude here, so let me drop our collective while I'm at it. I don't wanna drop it too much because we do have the extra weight of the Huey, and even though this helicopter does have a hell of a lot of torque, I also don't wanna tempt fate here. All right, so there we go. We'll start bringing her in. Now, another cool thing that I learned about the Huey is the fact that depending on what the speed is, as long as you've got your cyclic uh, trim or your longitudinal trim on, it will actually change the angle of these rotor blades. So let's say if you are less than about 60 knots, it will make the rotors appear to be more, I guess, horizontal. So it'll be pushing down vertically. The faster you go, the more the rotor disc itself tilts forward, which is really cool. All right, we are still gaining an altitude. Why are we gaining an altitude here? We drop the collective all the way. Hopefully I won't regret that decision. All right, there we go. Now we're starting to come down and we're starting to come down a lot. I don't want to drop too hot and heavy because Huey is not going to like that. Hmm, okay, so there's our parking spot. We'll see if we can get it there. So I'm probably going to need to come to a complete stop here. So once again, we'll pull the collective down. We'll try not to dip too rapidly. But yeah, this is going to be interesting getting it right on the spot. All right, so we're at 50. We're coming down in airspeed, so I need to give it collective again. We've settled into a descent of about 500 feet per minute, which is optimal, actually. We're going down to about 700. We don't want to go past 1,000 feet per minute, though. That could start getting really tricky. Last thing we want is to get into vortex ring state, or as some call it, settling with power, or uh, as I've heard from another Chinook pilot who commented on a previous video, settling with insufficient power. <laughs> does have a lot of torque and a lot of power however there's always uh, some areas where you need to be careful or some flight regimes that you need to be careful in all right so we'll come down nice and easy here we're at what 1800 yeah we're fine we're fine I'm actually gonna pull us back a little bit because you can see all of those uh, trucks tractor trailers and containers and whatnot the parking spot that we're looking for is going to be that light gray spot that's a rectangle there. That's where we're going to try and drop this sucker. All right, so we'll keep 
on target here. I'm going to pull us back just so that I have a good point of reference as we bring this thing down. Probably should go to the outside view and uh, check on the Huey just to make sure that it is still hanging straight down below. I imagine my loadmaster would probably give me the heads up if there was an issue. So we're going to assume that everything is okay. And we'll keep bringing her down. is going on at that roundabout oh Spain you so silly <laughs> I have no idea what they're doing we're just gonna ignore them we still have a job to do here all right I am dipping the nose or pulling the nose up actually that way we will go backwards a little bit here you can see the fence now for the fenced in area where we're gonna be dropping off this Huey Starting to get a little bit more liberal on my descent, so about 600 feet per minute. Looking good, looking good. You can drop this thing from altitude. It will not necessarily destroy your cargo. Obviously, though, I don't really recommend you do that. So what I am going to do, however, since I have that button bound to uh, one of my buttons on my verbal throttle, I'm going to go to the outside view once we get a little bit lower and that way I'll be able to see as soon as the Huey skids touch the ground and know exactly when I can disconnect the load. But again, for the developer for X Trident, that is something that I think uh, might be worth investigating. And I have heard that uh, they are working on adding some of these features in there, but it would be really cool to have like an audio cue from your crew to tell you when to disconnect, when to connect, and so on and so forth. I don't know how hard it is to code stuff like that. I know DCS does have things like that in there. That would be a, a welcome addition, I believe, for this flight sim as well. Okay, so I think I've stalled for time enough. Let's go ahead and bring this puppy in. So we've got one out of two happy customers here. We were able to get the Huey on deck perfectly. So now we need to switch gears a little bit and go for the Hummer. So let me pull the collective back now that uh, we have enough power to stay airborne. And this is what we are going to do. So back up to this thing, we are going to select Humvee and we're going to go to Fly 2. So now it will give us the distance and bearing to the Hummer. You'll see we're 7.6 nautical miles off at a heading of, what is it, 333? Okay, which means we need to make a left turn. So let's do that right now. All right, so yeah, this is looking good. One thing I will say, because it is Orbix and because of course I am recording, it does have the tendency of dropping your FPS a little in VR. It's not too, too bad to the point where, you know, I can consider this unflyable, but just be advised that is a known thing with Orbix. It does tend to be 
little bit heavy on your frames, especially if you are in VR and doing stuff like I am doing uh, with recording videos for you. But nothing we can't handle. So let's give it a little bit more collective here because I realize this is going to be a longer video. For those of you who are familiar with me and my channel, you know that my videos generally tend to be a little longer, oftentimes upwards of an hour or so in length. That's just how I like to do things. I like to do things long form and, of course, try to entertain you with some of the shenanigans that I get into. But for those of you who are newer, thankfully, you can always save this to watch later and pick it up at another point in time. If you so desire, that is. I'm not going to tell you what to do. It's your decision as to whether or not you want to watch. All right, but we are back up to speed and we are now stable at about 900 feet above mean sea level. You can see our radar altimeter says otherwise. But yeah, we should be good to go. We just need to get through these peaks here. We still have approximately six miles to go to get to where the Hummer is, and we are heading in pretty much the correct direction. I'm gonna adjust slightly with the pedals there. We don't necessarily have to have the heading hold on, but it does help. Not gonna lie, it definitely does help. So we can always activate that momentarily here. Actually, let me uh, change the heading bug. There we go, right there. Turn you on and feet off the pedal. So that way we don't crash into a mountain. Swing out to the right. Now, I also have um, on my verbal throttle one of the knobs set for the heading increase and decrease, the change to the heading bug. That is really handy to have, like, as a thumb wheel. So if you do decide to fly this thing on autopilot, like I am doing right now, you can easily just manipulate which way you want the helicopter to go by just changing your uh, heading. So there you go. Cool stuff. All right, I think we should be high enough to get over this hill, but I'm not going to go to the outside view yet until I'm absolutely certain that we are. Never know, I might need to take it off of altitude hold. Uh, I think we'll make it. I think we'll make it. Okay, so I know that the Hummer is on the other side of that city, and you'll have to forgive me, I didn't check the map to see what the names of all of these uh, cities and villages are. But uh, we are going to line ourselves up, so let me go ahead and switch our heading hold here. And I have a rough idea as to where I put this thing. So hopefully our little HSI will guide us exactly where we need to go. It says three and a half miles to our destination. So now would probably be a good time to go back to the outside view. So we should be getting pretty close. Uh, says we're about a half a mile away, so we need to be on the lookout for a small tan Humvee, and I think I see it right there. Let's use the magic binoculars. Yep, sure enough, that is our wayward Humvee. Okay, so now we need to get to the deck here. 
And typically I would probably try to do some fancy flying just to kind of show off how I can maneuver this bird. However, I think it's more important that we get the job done today rather than do any air show shenanigans. So even though I am kind of whipping her around a little bit, I am also keeping an eye on my gauges just to make sure we don't get into quote unquote the danger zone. We are coming down a little bit sprightly, but considering the fact that we are lighter right now because of the fact that we don't have anything hooked to the bottom, we can afford to do it. Plus, we're still going fast enough. You can see we're at 45 knots. But I am going to pull the nose up a little bit here. So I want to make sure we can hook this thing. And let's go ahead and put that picture in picture back on. One thing I will also mention, you may notice that my little guy is like hanging out the door and the other guy is just kind of chilling there in the back. Uh, we can actually change their positions really quick. So if I go to MISC and turn off landing assistant, turn on load assistant, that will actually change their locations and positions. So you will see that right now in the picture in picture. You'll notice that uh, the one guy is looking through the hatch in the floor. And let me just bring us to a full stop here. We'll start coming down. You can see our soldier on top of his trusty Humvee, which right now is not being very reliable if he's stuck. At least he's stuck in a good neighborhood, though. Looks really pretty around here. Love it. I could get caught up sightseeing all day long. All right, but we've got a job to do, so let's go ahead and do it. Slowly but surely inch our way forward. And basically, this is a ballet between the cyclic, the collective, and of course, the pedals. So let's see if we can bring her in. I'm a little too far to the left. Swing us to the right there, and we're looking for it to say drop instead of connect. All right, now I've got eyes on. It's a lot trickier than it looks, folks. Definitely a lot trickier than it looks. Okay, it appears we are connected, so we're going to go straight up. Seventy. Okay, so we definitely have it hooked up on the bottom. I'm going to get a little bit higher because I am not too pleased with how that hill looks directly in front of us. So I want to make sure that we can pass that. In the meantime, we'll get past this uh, effective translational lift. So that way we can translate some of this to forward speed as well. And there we go. Okay, so if you pay attention to the HSI, you'll notice the smaller one that says two. That's where we're going to need to head. That is our airport. So now that we are airborne and the Hummer would appear to be on the bottom, at least according to the picture in picture, we're going to head out this way and make our way back to the airport. And we'll go back to the outside view while we're doing it. much on the heading where we need to be we're still going to gain a little bit more altitude because as you can see we've got some pretty imposing hills directly ahead of us and I do not want to smack this Humvee on the bottom of them so once again we're going to put on the altitude hold 
but I'm just gonna try and set us up here. We are flying a little fast, so let me drop some collective here. Kind of a ballet, folks. It's kind of a ballet. We wanna make sure that we are going just fast enough that uh, everything will still be copacetic. But we also want to make sure that we are stable enough in flight so that I can activate our altitude hold. There it is. Okay, and I think we can also move our little guys now. So we're going to put them back as uh, sitting, which is that. I have asked X-Trident to see if they can give a little bit more automation to this so that way we don't have to change them around. Not sure if that is something that uh, is really high on the priority list. However, they have told me that they are going to look into it. So, you know what? That's good enough for me. All right, we're a little off course here. We're slightly to the right of where we should be. So, we'll go ahead and move left. So, we are now heading directly for the VOR, which is on the opposite side of that airport. And as far as this Humvee goes, we are going to be dropping that off close to our parking spot. So that way uh, we won't need to taxi very far to actually park this thing and call our job done. We are, however, losing a fair amount of forward speed, and I'm not too keen on that. So let's go ahead and pull the collective back up. The autopilot is still technically on, so it's gonna try and get us back up to the altitude that we were at. But before it can do that, I do need us to have enough forward momentum. So that's why I'm kind of forcing my hand here with the autopilot, and of course it is working with me to make sure that we stay airborne, which is of course the most important thing of all. All right, so right there should be good. I forget what the altitude was that we were at. So you know what? Before this thing starts going crazy, let's turn that off and we'll fly manually. And we're now starting to hit the deck. That's no bueno. All right, so we'll head off in this direction here. Gain some more forward speed, build up some of that lost altitude. And we're actually in a better place now than we were before. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let's hop outside for a second and make sure that the Humvee is okay with that. So we are back in business here, and there is the airport. We need to find our helipad. There should be an office building just behind it and to the left. Yeah, I think I see it right there. It's the white building behind the keyhole-shaped uh, brown building there. So there should be a parking spot right in front of that building, and I'm thinking that is probably where we should drop off this Humvee. So that's going to be our next stop. And we should probably approach it from the other side because I don't feel like carrying this Humvee over that building at so low an altitude that uh, it becomes a hazard. And as you can see, we still have trucks driving all across the way. So yeah, that's fun. All right, coming down at 500 feet per minute. It's probably going to vacillate between uh, 500 and 700 feet per minute because I want to get this done quickly. I do realize this video is getting longer. And even though, as I've said before, I am known for my long videos, I also don't want to bore you to death. Okay, we are definitely dropping in airspeed, so let's do some pedal action and swing her around, and I'm gonna try and see if I can drop this thing just behind that box truck. Looks like he's making a delivery. Dude, 
you picked the wrong time to come to this neighborhood. But I'm gonna try and see if I don't hit you here. If not, we'll have to drop it off in this little uh, parking area. All right, so just like we did before, we're gonna go to the outside view and we'll get ready to disconnect. So we have pretty much done our job and we have two choices here. We can either come back in the way that we took off, meaning over the runway there, or we could land vertically. I'm thinking we're probably gonna do a little bit of both here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn us around really quick. So nose up, to the right pedal, collective down, Collective's gonna come back up in a moment. And there is our helipad. So that is what we're aiming for. And we'll see if we can do the uh, pedal ballet here. Bring her in. Let's see how well I can do this. So far, I was able to drop the Huey off. I was able to drop the Humvee off without any critical issues. Now let's see if I can drop the Chinook off without us breaking into a thousand pieces. This is where I need your good vibes the most, folks. But I will say this, overall, X-Trident has done an absolutely phenomenal job on this helicopter. I know that there are areas of improvement and having spoken with the developer regularly, I do understand where they're coming from and I'm pretty sure that they will have updates for this thing in short order. I'm really glad that they updated the pop-up so that I can use it in VR because it does help. But as I've tried to demonstrate with this video, you can still see some areas where it is a little bit cumbersome to use. We could probably use a little bit more automation here and there. But like everything, I'm sure that will come in time. So I'm not going to be too harsh on x -Trident. After all, they did give me my absolute favorite helicopter of all time for this flight sim. And that's it. We are down. Parking brakes on. And we are good to go. So there you go, folks. That is it. This is the X Trident CH 47 Delta Chinook by Boeing Vertol. It is available now. So if you are interested in this helicopter, the link is going to be in the video description below. Make sure you tell them Belgio sent you and tell them that uh, I give this thing two thumbs up. <laughs> the scenery that we've been flying around here is Orbix, True Earth, Balearic Islands. This particular island is the island of Ibiza, but it also does come with Mallorca and some of the other islands in this chain. Highly recommend you pick it up, and of course, I've shown you how you can basically throw different items all over the scenery for yourself to pick up and practice sling loading with. So there we go. All right, but that will just about do it for me, folks. So I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed what you have seen. As always, this has been Belgeoed. I have been flying in X-Plane 11, and... If you do enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll be back with more Explain Goodness. We're probably going to head to another one of the Balearic Islands for the next video so I can show you some other 
really cool and fun aircraft. And I think it's going to be fixed wing twin engine this time. That is all I will say about that. All righty, folks, that's it for me. Thanks again for watching. Ciao.